head of Electric Boat recalled last month the time 20 years ago when the U.S. Navy was re-evaluating its fleet after the fall of the Soviet Union and 12,000 jobs were lost at the submarine factory in Groton. The Army chose Bell's V-280 Valor tilt rotor aircraft over Sikorsky's Black Hawk, so significantly fewer jobs at Sikorsky and Stratford are now at risk. While production shifts to Texas-based Bell and parent company Textron potentially produce thousands of V-280 Valor aircraft, as the Army's future workhorse, Sikorsky could reduce employment in the Bridgeport region by thousands of jobs over the coming decades, absent a reversal or a significant new contract for another Army helicopter for reconnaissance missions. Do you want to know how the legendary Black Hawk helicopters were replaced? Make sure to stay tuned till the end. The 110 aircraft that Sikorsky completed last year included the work of 8,500 Connecticut-based employees and another 4,500 workers at other locations. For inquiries regarding the Pentagon's decision and Sikorsky's potential future moves, such as the possibility of a formal bid protest based on any shortcomings the Bell proposal might have over its own, the company declined to make an executive available. The manufacturer's president spoke about the deal in March at a meeting organized by the Vertical Lift Society, claiming that the military will benefit from the defiant Flight X's qualities as well as the financial savings from foregoing any significant air-based renovations. Paul Lemo, president of Sikorsky, remarked, You don't actually need new hangars, new landing places, or ground support equipment. We think it's a huge deal that we designed and developed this to be compatible with the Black Hawk infrastructure. Army planners chose the Bell V-280 Valor, proving that it was not a significant enough issue to influence them. Invoking confidential information, the Army refuses to disclose the specifics of its decision-making process. Several members of Connecticut's congressional delegation, including U.S. Senator Richard Blumenthal, who serves on the Senate Armed Services Committee, Representative Rosa DeLauro, who serves on the House Appropriations Committee, and Representative Joe Courtney, who serves on the House Armed Services Committee, have indicated their desire to learn more from the Army. Bell has yet to specify the location of the V-280 Valor's construction. The V-280 is a scaled-down variation of the tilt-rotor aircraft produced in Amarillo by the Texas-based Textron subsidiary. The three costliest current Pentagon programs are shared by Texas, Connecticut, and Virginia. The F-35 Lightning II fighter jet, which was budgeted at $12 billion in the fiscal year 2022 that ends in October, is the most expensive. The F-35 is put together by Lockheed Martin in Fort Worth, Texas, with F-135 jet engines mounted there from the Pratt & Whitney Division of Raytheon Technologies in East Hartford. The Columbia-based ballistic missile submarines are currently being built by Groton-based General Dynamics Electric Boat as the prime contractor, with Huntington Ingalls making key subcomponents at Newport News Shipbuilding. The Virginia class of attack submarines are being built separately by Electric Boat and Newport News. In the fiscal year 2022, the F-35 and two sub-programs used 23 cents of every dollar spent by the organization on new equipment. Despite the fact that no single Sikorsky helicopter makes it to the top 15 Pentagon procurement programs at the moment, the four models currently produced in Stratford and Bridgeport are expected to generate nearly $4.1 billion in government revenue in fiscal year 2022, placing them fifth on the Pentagon's list of desired products, behind the Arleigh Burke class of destroyers built at General Dynamics Bath Iron Works Shipyard in Maine and a Huntington Ingalls Shipyard in Mississippi. Kevin Graney, president of Electric Boat, still well recalls the slump his shipyard had just after the year 2000, before Virginia and later Columbia submarine contracts were awarded to it. During the peace dividend and the conclusion of the Cold War, the population of Electric Boat decreased from around 20,000 to approximately 8,000, according to Graney, who was speaking last month at an event in New Haven organized by the Connecticut Department of Economic and Community Development. There was a time there in the early 2000s when we went roughly eight years without delivering a submarine. However, as the electric boat sank, the economic fallout was very small for the wider New London region, even while expansions at the casinos at Foxwoods and Mohegan Sun did not result in job opportunities that paid as well as those at electric boat, unemployment peaked in 2003 at 4.8% on an annualized basis, which was lower than the state average for Connecticut. CH-53K King Stallion helicopter Sikorsky is building for the U.S. Marine Corps, along with Black Hawks, Jolly Green Two Relief helicopters for the Air Force, and VH-92A transport helicopters for the White House, which will have a fleet of 23 in total, will provide a steady pipeline of work over the next 10 years. And after receiving a certificate from the Federal Aviation Administration last year permitting it to do so, Sikorsky still has high aspirations for selling Black Hawk and King Stallion helicopters to other militaries, as well as a civilian version of its Black Hawk for commercial usage at home. 
Given the sluggish recent sales of Sikorsky's S-92 and S-76 helicopters and the ongoing advancement in drone technology, it's unclear whether any meaningful civilian market will develop. Recently, Sikorsky closed a plant in Coatesville, Pennsylvania that had been at the forefront of commercial helicopter production. Between 2015 and the closure, the firm cut close to a thousand positions there, some of which were held by outside contractors. Lemo stated at the Vertical Flight Society's March meeting that one of the reasons for the Coatesville plant's closure was that we're constantly looking at our capacity versus demand and making modifications to facility footprints. In some ways, that is the best way to change your cost structure. The failure of the Defiant X increases the pressure on Lemo and Sikorsky to implement an armed scout helicopter they've proposed, the Raider X, which is similarly designed and can carry troops and equipment in addition to serving as a forward observer and attack helicopter. The helicopter could ultimately save many jobs in Stratford. With its proposed Invictus helicopter, Bell is also vying for the Army's forward attack reconnaissance aircraft program. As aerial drone technology advances, the Pentagon has postponed making a decision regarding the helicopter program, leading some observers to speculate that it may be having second thoughts. Lemo stated in March of last year that he anticipated a ruling in 2024. V-280 Valor Designed by Bell the V-280's moniker comes from its intended cruise speed of 280 knots, its range is 2100 nautical miles, its top speed is 300 knots, and its fighting range is between 500 and 800 nautical miles. Maximum takeoff weight is anticipated to be around 30,000 pounds. The engines are kept in position while the rotors and drive shafts tilt, which is a significant improvement over the older V-22 Osprey tilt rotor. In the case of an engine failure, both prop rotors can be driven by a single engine thanks to a drive shaft that passes through the straight wing. Retractable landing gear, a triple redundant fly-by-wire control system, and a V-tail design will all be features of the V-280. To reduce weight and production costs, the wings are built from a single section of carbon fiber reinforced polymer composite. The V-280 will feature a four-person crew and be able to carry up to 14 soldiers. Its two cargo hooks will let it raise a 10,000 kg M777A2 howitzer while traveling at 150 knots. The UH-60 Black Hawk medium lift helicopter's fuselage is aesthetically similar. The wing is higher than 7 feet off the ground when it's landed, allowing soldiers to exit the two 6-foot wide side doors with ease and give door gunners a large field of fire. Bell is also working on an assault configuration, even if the initial design is a utility setup. Bell is certain that the Valor tilt rotor platform can carry out both tasks, whether it takes many V-20 variants to cover utility and assault roles or a single airframe that can swap out payloads for either mission. The U.S. Marine Corps is interested in replacing utility and attack helicopters with a single aircraft, but the Army, which is in charge of the program, isn't sold on the idea and wants different platforms for each task. Even in forward flight and cruise phases with the rotors facing ahead, Bell and Lockheed assert that an AV-280 derivative may launch rockets, missiles, and even tiny unmanned aerial vehicles forward or aft without rotor interference. Let us know your thoughts on the V-280 Valor in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, then please make sure to like it, share, and subscribe to our channel for more amazing videos like this one.